final segment of the show for today. The topic is the 1890 land grant institutions and the impact upon historical black institutions of the uh, United States. And of course, uh, Mr. Will Nesby is talking about uh, some of his experiences as well as the institutions and some of the things that are currently involved in these institutions. Let's pick up where we left off, uh, Brother Nesby. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, as, I, as we were talking, the liaison officers on, on these campuses deal with five major areas. Mm -hmm. They are student recruitment and retention, mm -hmm. capacity building. I'm actually reading these because I do not mm -hmm. want to forget them. Mm -hmm. uh, building capacity, or capacity building, centers of excellence, federal excess property programs, mm -hmm. and the USDA National Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. Let, briefly, I'll, I'll tell you about each one of them. Thank of you. Of course, mm -hmm. recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the liaison, uh, the program liaison, works with the university to develop recruitment programs mm -hmm. that will, will, in, will increase enrollment or encourage students to attend mm -hmm. Tennessee State and choose a field mm -hmm. in agriculture so that they can eventually hopefully go to work with the USDA. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, capacity building. Now there are two forms of capacity building. Mm -hmm. Capacity building in teaching and research. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the, the research scientists there at Tennessee State will, will develop proposals mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for research, and these proposals will go into the USDA, the Washington office, and they'll mm -hmm. review, mm -hmm. hopefully they'll be funded. Same mm -hmm. thing for teaching. So it, uh, these, this program is to build the capacity. The ability uh, of the institution uh, to uh, function uh, Exactly, well. uh -huh. at Tennessee mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, there's a center, the Centers of Excellence. Each university has a center of excellence. At Tennessee State University, our center was developed with the assistance from the Ag Research Service. They call it ARS. It's down at McMinnville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's the Nursery Crop Experiment okay. Station. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what has come out of this program. That was uh, funded with, mm -hmm. with USDA funds. And, and right now, that particular station is considered to be the authority mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, uh, various research involving nursery mm -hmm. crops. Then, of course, the Federal Excess Property Program. Mm -hmm. uh, that means exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government, uh, including the USDA, mm -hmm. has property uh, that maybe, maybe it could be uh, uh, vehicles, older vehicles, mm -hmm. and in some cases, property can be brand new, but mm -hmm. it's, it's excess property, and it's a long, drawn-out story as to how that works. The president of the university mm -hmm. usually assigns a property manager mm -hmm. to deal with excess property that comes from the U.S. Uh, uh, from the U.S. government, mm -hmm. but I would serve as a conduit. Mm -hmm. I will, if somebody is interested in property, then I will put them in touch with mm -hmm. the right people, and we go mm -hmm. from there for this excess property. The and, final, and, and so those institutions really have access to that property simply by being a part of the system itself. Being, being and that of, could mean anything. If you, mean, there might be a, a lot of trucks or whatever that might be needed, and et cetera. Dr. So, Haney, um, I, it's my understanding that now, they didn't tell me exactly which university, but my understanding is one of the 1890 universities received an airplane okay, through uh, the excess property okay. program. So <laughs> it could be just about mm -hmm. anything. anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, the, the fifth uh, area of expertise that, that, uh, the program was the USDA National Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. This is a tremendous, I mean a tremendous benefit mm -hmm. to the black community, mm -hmm. uh, the, the minority community, 1890 mm -hmm. community. This program was established uh, uh, through an agreement between those 1890 presidents mm -hmm. and the USDA. Mm -hmm. it, the USDA wanted to um, develop managers. In other words, they wanted to come into the 1890 universities, uh, select graduates, mm -hmm. bring them into their agencies, and groom them mm -hmm. in order to become top-level managers mm -hmm. or heads of mm -hmm. agencies. So. In 1993, they implemented this National Scholars mm -hmm. Program. What they try to do, they try to uh, provide two scholarships per year to each of the uh, 1890 mm -hmm. universities. Doesn't always work that way, because mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, Tennessee State got five mm -hmm. USDA scholars one year. But the, 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 the gist of this program, the USDA pays all of the expenses, mm -hmm. including books, the university provides room and board. Mm -hmm. And these students, uh, they sign an agreement saying that for every year that, that they're on this scholarship, they will give the government one year of employment after graduation. Mm -hmm. But the summers count. These mm -hmm. students work in the summers, and so usually by the time they graduate, they may owe the U.S. government about three years of employment. Mm -hmm. But the U.S. government is kind of smart. The way they look at it is once they get these students to come and work they, with them, after, that's about, that's three, that's after <laughs> about three years, they'll have it. them at a salary <laughs> that they'll stay. Yeah, yes, that's so, 